Well, good morning. <clears throat> if you've watched my channel for any length of time, you'll notice it, uh, or noticed that I spend a bit of time listening to Shortwave. Shortwave Radio and I are old friends. It's uh, kind of started as a humble beginning for me building my first crystal set <clears throat> to slowly advancing to nowadays I can use my personal computer to remotely uh, access other people's radio sites and listen to their shortwave radios. I really don't even need one anymore as long as I've got the internet and the computer. But I was sitting there and I was thinking the other day and uh, about the time, about that time, I watched another YouTuber's channel who directed me to a website. Yeah, I know, it sounds like a friend of a cousin of a friend, which it kind of was. And I noticed an article there, and the article was kind of, uh, for lack of a better word, going on about um, some, some things that were going to aid you in your short way of listening. And they acted like, you know, these were some things you could do, wouldn't cost you a lot of money, blah, 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 blah. And I kind of thought to myself, well, you know what, that's, that's, that's all stuff that you ought to be doing anyway. You, you really, it's not, not, don't get me wrong, I'm not bad-mouthing the other person's article. I just thought to myself, these are things that are kind of part and parcel of listening to Shortwave. And I thought, well, maybe people don't know that it's, you know... Kind of like getting any new hobby, you start out with the basics and add a few features later, and then you, as time goes on, you realize, you know, how did I ever do without these things? And here's just some things I was going to mention. I kind of personally think they're must-haves. You don't absolutely have to have them, but they can really increase your listening, uh, you know, abilities and, and what you're going to get out of this hobby. I mean, I don't... I don't think anybody gets pro paid professionally to listen to the short wave. Maybe military personnel, but uh, I'd say for the most of us, this is a hobby. And it's kind of nice. It can be as complicated or as simple as you want. And that's one of the fun things about this. Uh, everybody's got their own ideas. Everybody's got their own location. There, there are an infinite number of variables, and it makes it fun. It, you get to compare notes and see what other people are doing and try different things it it's interesting it's just very interesting so let's uh... let's start off here i think it's fair to say that any shortwave radio or pretty much any radio is really only as good as its antenna i mean without the antenna or some form of antenna the radio is just a box that has batteries and knobs and buttons and a speaker and we just make some crackling noises and that would be the end of it don't think they're gonna sell too many of those on the internet um, a lot of little poor oriented radios come with just a basic you know rod type antenna but hidden away on the side that I think a lot of people don't realize is a little jack and you can plug an external antenna on there. Now this one just happens to be one that would have came with a uh, a radio and this is just basically a big chunk of wire. There's nothing to stop you from uh, <coughs> pardon me. There's nothing to stop you from just getting that adapter that's soldering on a little end there or just a little clip lead you know. And there's been plenty of things kind of showing the pros and cons and I'm going to err on the side of uh, at least try it. It's relatively inexpensive and it's worth a go. Now, that being said, the, the, the next little thing that's kind of a must-have in shortwave radio is kind of like real estate. Location, location, location. Probably next to the radio and next to the antenna, having a decent location is pretty much a must. Well, what's a decent location? There aren't signs in yards that say, you know, we cater to shortwave radio and your pets. Now, that is true. But a little common sense will probably help you out. You know, you probably don't want to take your shortwave radio up to a huge industrial site. You probably don't want to travel the 2.7 miles up the road where there are, at least in my area, there are 
for high-powered uh, digital television stations, maybe not so much. You may not want to be inside the safety of your little home where there are thousands of potential little annoying sources of uh, RF energy that you may not even know of. Um, again, this, this stuff kind of makes shortwave interesting and you can uh, kind of expand on that. My suggestion is you sit down and make a little list. One of the other things that, that I think makes shortwave radio fun, and it can be as simple as a dollar notebook and a pen. You might even be able to get it for free. Um, you know, when, you're, uh, when your housemates aren't looking, you run into their room and grab their uh, college ruled notebook and run off with one of their pens. They'll never miss it. The reason that the notebook and the pen are important, or pencil, per actually, I personally prefer a pencil, is that you want to write down the things you, you know, listened to or heard or, you know, caught. Um, it makes it fun and interesting. I have quite a few notebooks, and one of these days, like the family slideshow, I'll dig one out and bore you to tears with all the radio catches I've had over the years. But it's kind of fun. It's kind of like a little paper time capsule to stuff you may even forgot you even heard. And it may be stuff you heard and may never ever hear again. So it's kind of an easy no-brainer. You just, you know, there are plenty of suggestions out in print and out on the internet. You know, me, I always write the time down. I just have just given up and use UTC. It's too confusing to go back and forth. Uh, you need the date and what you heard and where it was at and maybe, you know, what mode it was on. And maybe how long you listen to it. It just makes things kind of fun. It makes it easy. It's a no-brainer. It's kind of a must. One of the other things that makes shortwave interesting to listen to are these. There is a just wave of these little personal digital recorders. They're little digital audio recorders. A lot of shortwave radios at least have an earphone jack. At bare minimum, you could lay the recorder near the shortwave radio. You're not going to get great, uh, you know, reception. But you could stand the thing up and just set it near it. If worse came to worst, but usually there's an audio cord that uh, hooks the radio or the. Uh, digital recorder up to the radio. Some radios have a separate port intended for recording devices. That's a real plus. I really like this little Sony one. Um, you don't have to rush out and buy one because you can plug headphones into this and hear what you're actually recording, which is a nice feature. But, you know, you can get uh, you can get one of these at the pawn shop or the thrift store or, you know, uh, maybe your boss's desk drawer there are thousands and thousands of these floating around that people buy, use for a while, and throw away. There are older, uh, you know, the older analog recorder ones that have the little micro cassettes. Me personally, uh, as much as I like old junk like that, they're kind of a pain. The cassettes are hard to find. They're easily lost. They're hard to categorize. You know, this is this is the 21st century. I suggest you just go this way. And you, like I said, you can probably find a used one for a couple dollars in some box of junk at some estate sale. Um, you're spending all this time to try and dig around and find a really great shortwave radio catch. Spend some time and dig around and try and find a little recorder. You know, make your life a little easier. It might even substitute for the notebook. One of the other kind of in my book must-haves are um, some sort of power source. Now there's usually a couple ways to go. You can use batteries or you can plug into the wall. Uh, for those over, those of you over our neighbors, at least from me to the west and to the east, uh, you might, it might be called mains power. And that's fun. Personally, I like rechargeable batteries. Um, they're reusable. They're a little easier than covering the world with lots of dead batteries and you can get quite a few uses and there's some pretty decent uh, makes and models nowadays. You'll, you might need an, a charger but you might find a kit that has a number of batteries and a little charger. Now, one of the reasons I like the uh, 
using the battery route, I usually have a couple sets, is that it takes the noise equation out of um, your shortwave listening. Uh, if you plug into, you know, AC power, you've got to get that converted, and then your radio kind of becomes a slave to the power pack. It's only as good as the power that it's fed. There, with I think with it's reasonable to say that you're not going to have too many noisy batteries. I don't believe. I mean, if you do, maybe you ought to find a cheaper drugstore to buy them from. I would say another kind of a must-have are headphones. It's cheap and easy, and there are plenty of good ones for about $10 brand new. <clears throat> Um, and you can go about anywhere. You could practically get them out of a gum machine for a dollar. Um, you probably got a number of devices that have got them. You know, these both happen to be just ironically, these are both Bose. Um, these are just basic headphones. They're not noise canceling. I got these as a Christmas present. And these, amazingly enough, are Bose that uh, I got for free from my mom. She didn't like them, and they came with a uh, Bose some sort of little uh, clock household stereo death ray thing that Bose was hawking on TV that she got conned into. Mm, I don't know. They're not great headphones, but they are over the uh, over the head headphones and they do block out a lot of noise. Mm, you can get noise canceling headphones. I've had mixed results with those. Uh, personally, I think you get what you pay for and keep in mind that it's another thing with another battery. So, you know, your shortwave radio listening hobby is now turned into feeding all these electronic devices. Again, maybe rechargeable batteries are kind of the uh, shining white knight there. It's going to come to your rescue. So there you go. There's some basic things I think you can add. I, those are some things I pretty much think you should just have. Um, you know, in addition to the radio, antenna, location, headphones, some way to record the stuff or write it down. Kind of the basics. Kind of like going golfing without a ball. It, you're trying to get a new car without gasoline. It's a bit tough. It can be done, but you'll find that you'll, uh, if you're listening to Shorewave now, <clears throat> you'll find that you probably listen to it more and enjoy it more. And there are all sorts of expansions on this. I mean, like I said, you could take this to the nth degree. But, uh, I don't know. Nothing succeeds like success. And the shortest distance between two points is still the shortest distance. Keep it basic. Keep it simple. And all this stuff you could pack up in a little tiny bag or case. Or your little backpack. <clears throat> and, you know, take to another location. Try some different places around town. I guarantee it's a good way to get some dirty looks at the park with the kids they're at. Although you might make some new friends and you might open a few minds. Anyway, take her easy. Have a groovy day.